Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today I'm going to share with you how to set up Visual Studio Code for Python development. Microsoft describes Visual Studio Code as a code editor redefined and optimized for building and debugging modern web and cloud applications. Visual Studio Code is free and available for your favorite platform, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Last month, Microsoft released an officially supported version of Visual Studio Code, which runs on ARM and ARM64 machines. These are machines like the NVIDIA Jetson Developer Kits and the Raspberry Pi. First, we will install Visual Studio Code with Python development support. I'll quickly go through how to do a traditional install, and then we will do the actual installation centered around adding the MS Python extension. Then we will write an amazingly simple program which will show some of the features that the development environment supports. Okay, here we are on the code.visualstudio.com website. I'm on a NVIDIA Jetson Nano Developer Kit. Let's make this full screen. I can do that by double clicking in the title bar. Installation is well documented on the code.visualstudio.com website, but there is a little trick to it which will save you some time. There are a couple of download buttons on the web page which can best be described as honeypots. The download buttons will download a Linux version of Visual Studio Code which runs on a PC, not ARM devices. Instead, we need to go down here and click Other Platforms, then select ARM64 to download the correct .deb file. It will ask us if we want to keep this file. It can harm our computer. Let's keep it. We've been whisked away to the Getting Started page. Let's wander down here a little bit. And we go to Setup. Install VS Code for your platform. We follow the platform-specific guides below. Linux. Let's wander down here a little bit. The easiest way to install Visual Studio Code for Debian Ubuntu-based distributions is to download and install the .deb package. Let's open up a file browser. And we'll go to our downloads page. Here it is. Let's open up a terminal. And now to install it, we say sudo apt install. Like that. Depending on when you download this, the name may be different. When we hit carriage return, it installs it. But I have a better way to do this. Let's close this up. Let's double click on the web browser to shrink it. On the Jetson Hacks Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named install VS Code. Let's grab this address and clone the repository. Next, let's switch over to that repository's directory. There are two installation scripts here. The first one, install VS Code.sh. Let's take a look at it. It simply downloads the latest version of VS Code and installs it. This is similar to the procedure that we just went through, but it's in an automated form. Let's go back. The script that we are going to use is install VS Code with python.sh. Let's take a look at it. The script downloads the .deb file, and then it installs it. Next, we install some Python support packages like pip. Pip stands for pip installs packages. And then finally, the script installs the Python extension into Visual Studio Code. Let's run this script. Password. Installation complete. Now we're ready to run Visual Studio Code. Okay, let's clear this off. Let's start up Visual Studio Code. Let's 
Let's make it full screen. Remember, at its core, Visual Studio Code is an extensible editor. By adding different extensions, the editor can be turned into a complete development environment for a wide range of languages and code libraries. Languages include Python, C, C++, Golang, and Rust, just to name a few. Visual Studio Code is a very rich environment. If you are unfamiliar with Visual Studio Code, this is a good place to get started. Here's help. There's introductory videos, tips and tricks, a little cheat sheet you can use. Here's some helpful hints on how to select your tools and languages, your settings and key bindings. You can make Visual Studio Code act like other editors. Your favorite editor is probably in that list. You can set up the color themes, set up folder icons and such. And here's some more tutorials. To the left of the window is the activity bar. It's over here. Here's the file explorer. This is where you deal with your projects, the files, the project itself, folders and things of that nature. Here's the search and replace area, just like any good editor. Here's where you interact with Git. It has a built-in source control helper. There is also a dedicated debugger area. I think this is for people unlike us who actually make mistakes when they program. And then down here we have the extensions. Here are two of the extensions that we installed, Python. We can see the name here, mspython.python. If we go back and look at our installation file, that's how we asked it to install the extension. We can look at some of the features here in the feature contributions. We can see that there are quite a few of them. There are 107 different settings. I'm not going to cover all of them in this video. Certainly worth a look around. And then here's 41 different commands you can issue. I'm not going to cover those either. This is just one extension. We can also add other extensions from the marketplace. Here's some recommended ones. Docker. Vim, if you want Vim emulation. Let's look for C++. There are a bunch of those. There are literally thousands of extensions. I'm not going to cover all of them in this video. And then we have users and settings. Let's bring up the settings. Again, there are thousands of settings. <laughs> They're pretty serious. <laughs> take a look at this set real quick. Let's take a look at our text editor. Take a look at font. Let's crank up the editor. Make this more specific. And we just change them all to 16. Try that. And it saves them automatically. Let's write some code. Enough of this fiddling around. Let's open a folder. I have this little stub of a program to help us get started. Okay. The first thing you notice is that there is syntax highlighting. So let's say we want to print out to the system version. Here's our first IntelliSense interaction. These are the methods and variables that Sys knows about. When you're looking at a function, it tells you what the arguments are. A little bit about it. There's also a shortcut to comment lines. Let's uncomment this line. Control slash. I can do it from the menu here. And now we can run our little script here. A couple ways to do that. We can run the Python file in terminal. Let's do that. Or we could use this little green button over here. 
it does the same thing. So here we have the William list. It's pretty simple. There are some names which are variations of the name William. Let's print out the Williams. Here's a suggestion, print out the William list. That's exactly what I want to do. Let's run that. And there it is. Let's comment this out. Let's say we want to just iterate through this list and print the names out one at a time. Here's the concept named code snippets. We will click four. And this gives us a little bit of a structure. So for a William, tab over to the next thing and we'll say William list. Tab again, let's print a William. Let's try that and see what happens. And sure enough, they get printed out. So let's see what the goal of our simple little program is. Let's sort the William list and write it to a file. To sort the list in Python, we say William list dot, and then we want to sort it. This will sort the list in place. Let's print that out and see what it has to say for itself. Save that. Looks like it sorted it for us. Okay, things are looking good. We don't need that anymore. Let's open up a file and write to it now. With open. And we want to say the name of the file. And we will call this Williams text and then we add the magic incantation w plus as and we will say file and again a for loop Let's try that out. Let's see what happens. Oh, Williams.txt appeared. Let's take a look at it. Hmm, not exactly what I wanted here. What happened to the line feeds and carriage returns? Let's fix that. File write the name, and then we want to add a carriage return at the end. Let's run that again and see what happens. That fixed it. So that's pretty simple. If you have not seen this construct before, what happens is this opens a file. The file understands that this is a context. At the end of the context, the file will close itself. This is useful because if you have an exception somewhere in this block, it will still close the file for you. Let's take a quick look at the debugger. Those are always fun. To run and debug, create a launch.json file. This brought up our command palette. Let's select Python file. That looks good. Go back to our testy. Now we can bring that command palette back up. It is context sensitive, but if we just hit control shift P right now, we get everything. And I mean everything. <laughs> just looking at this, one thing that is not apparent is that there is a linter running. So for example, JavaScript to C, you put a semicolon at the end of the line. Python doesn't like that. So it marks it as red. If you put in a function it doesn't understand, say Molly, Billy. The linter works when you save the file. It doesn't understand Billy. And it doesn't understand Molly. So Molly's and Billy's, you're out. So let's run the debugger. Let's put a breakpoint right here. 
Let's clear our terminal. Let's start debugging. We'll click right here. It takes a little longer to launch the script in debug mode. Here we are, print a William. Here's our variables, the William list. A William is now Bill. Here's our debugger controller. We can continue, step over, step into. This is good if you are debugging a function of some sort. You can restart the program or stop it. So let's step over this. It goes back to the top of the for loop, of course, and it printed out Bill. So single step, we can just hop through this. This is the unsorted list, remember? By hitting continue, we just go to the next breakpoint or the end of the program, whichever comes first. I forgot to add, we can also choose which Python interpreter that we are using. We just click down here. Useful to know. It looks like it's up and running. This should get us started. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Oh, and stay safe. Thanks for watching.